A broad smile unfolds across Pepe Reina's bronzed features as he recalls the injustice served up to Mikel Arteta in the dorm room of a Barcelona farmhouse they used to call home. Reina was on the top bunk and Arteta below, but there was no doubt where the noise was coming from. I was the one snoring and the other lads in the room were get getting upset, explains the former Liverpool and Napoli goalkeeper. So they started to throw shin pads, shoes, flip-flops, anything they could lay their hands on. But because I was on top and he was on the bottom many of them ended up hitting Mikel. The sharing of that bed cost him many sleepless nights and almost our relationship. Plucked from Madrid and San Sebastian respectively as some of the brightest young talents in Spain, Reina and Arteta left home in their mid-teens to join La Mesa. FC Barcelona's world-famous residential academy has produced Lionel Messi, Xavi and Andres Iniesta and, until 2011, was located in a stone farmhouse across the road from the No Camp, the club's iconic stadium. When Tina Turner first spoke out about the violence she endured during her marriage to Ike Turner, it was an act of bravery to expose herself so publicly. I was insanely afraid of that man, she told People magazine in 1981, revealing the painful reality behind the hugely successful musical duo. Tina's scorching description of their marriage included being made to watch a live sex show in a brothel on their wedding night and being beaten with a shoe stretcher while she was pregnant. She also spoke about Ike throwing scalding coffee at her and of being brutalized with a coat hanger. In 1968, she tried to take her own life. I was afraid to, to put it out, talk about the abuse, because of what I would get from Ike, she told journalist Carl Arrington. Maxim had been fighting for 200 hours without a break when he was killed by a Russian sniper in the city of Bakhmut. For eight days he did not eat or sleep, his mother Lilia says. He couldn't even close his eyes for five minutes because the sniper could shoot. There's a reason why she now calls Bakhmut, hell, Bakhmut, hell. It's the city that took the life of one son and left her only other child seriously injured. Her one scant comfort that one died saving the life of the other. Maxim and Ivan volunteered to fight when Russia invaded Ukraine last year. At the time, Maxim was 22 years old and, I and Ivan just 18. Ivan, the younger brother who still carries the scars, says they were inseparable. He was always with me and I with him. For me, he was the dearest person.
ABBA's Bjorn Olvaeus and Benny Anderson have ruled out a reunion at the 2024 Eurovision Song Contest in their native Sweden. Next year will be the 50th anniversary of the band winning the competition with their song Waterloo. Speaking to reports Newsnight, the pair also dismissed the idea that they might compose the host nation's, en nation's entry. Since ABBA won in 1974, Sweden has gone on to win Eurovision five more times, including this year in Liverpool. Bjorn and Benny, who swore never to tour again and reportedly turned down an offer of $1 billion to play 100 shows at the turn of the millennium, say they do not want to get back together with Agnetha Falskog and Annie Frid Lingstead to perform, even for one night. Succession star Brian Cox has said he thought his character Logan Roy was killed off too early in the latest series of the acclaimed drama. The Dundee-born actor praised writer Jesse Armstrong, however, for executing the plotline brilliantly. The fourth and final series of the Emmy-winning show saw Cox's media mogul killed off in the third episode. I mean, he'd made him die in the third episode, Cox continued. And it was a great scene. That's why I didn't watch it, because I have no interest in watching. My own death will come soon enough. But I just thought, wow, you know, he did it brilliantly. It was a brilliant scene, the whole act. Asked if he considered suggesting to Armstrong that Logan was being killed off too soon, Cox said, no, I didn't. There's no point going down that road, especially with somebody like Jesse, because he's already made a plan. The new owner of Silicon Valley Bank's SVB, U.S. Operations, First Citizens, is cutting around 500 roles held by former SVB workers, the reporters understands. Two months ago, First Citizens bought the business after SVB's collapse. The failure of SVB, along with two other U.S. banks, triggered fears of a more widespread banking crisis, which forced authorities to step in. SVB's business in the UK was bought in March by London headquartered banking giant HSBC for a nominal £1, $1.25. The team in India that supports SVB is not, is not impacted by the changes, he added. The reporters understand that the job cuts amount to around 3% of the company's total workforce. The story was first reported by US-based news website Axios. First Citizens is based in Raleigh, in the U.S. state of North Carolina and calls itself America's biggest family-controlled bank. It has been one of the largest buyers of troubled banks in recent years.
A ship that was grounded in the Suez Canal has been been refloated, shipping agent Leth Agency says. Tugboats had been working to refloat the bulk carrier, named Xinhai Tong 23, the company said earlier. The Suez Canal Authority did not immediately respond to a request for comment. To you, the Suez Canal, one of the busiest waterways in the world, was impassable for almost a week after a giant container ship became stuck. The Suez Canal Authority has successfully refloated MV Xinhai Tong 23 at 0740 hours, Leth said in a tweet. The ship, which sails under the Hong, the Hong Kong flag, had been not under command near the southern end of the canal, positioned at an angle next to the canal's eastern side, according to the Marine Traffic Ship Tracker. The head of the Russian paramilitary group that said it was behind a cross-border raid into Russia from Ukraine has vowed more such incursions. I think you will see us again on that side, said Denis Kapustin, who leads the Russian Volunteer Corps, RDK. Russia said it had repelled the raid, killing more than 70 saboteurs. saboteurs. Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shaigu promised a harsh response to any future incursions. Ukraine denies involvement in the raid. Denis Kapustin is known as a Russian nationalist, and his group openly says it wants a mono-ethnic Russian state. The RDK along with the Lee of Russia Legion, LSR, claimed Monday's raid into Belgorod region. Speaking on Wednesday to reporters on the Ukrainian side of the border, its leader, whose nom de guerre is White Rex, said, we're satisfied with the result. A 95-year-old woman who was tasered by police at an Australian care home, sparking a public outcry, has died. Claire Nowland was critically injured after police responded to reports she was wandering around the home with a steak knife at about 4 o'clock last Wednesday. New South Wales Police, NSW, said she died, she died, surrounded by family and loved ones. The officer who tasered Mrs. Nowland has been charged with assault. The 33-year-old senior constable will face court in early July on charges of recklessly causing grievous bodily harm, assault occasioning actual bodily harm, and common assault. He remains suspended from duty with pay while investigations continue. Giving plants the starring role in your diet is good for heart health, a review of four decades of data shows.
Researchers in Denmark showed vegetarian and vegan diets cut levels of cholesterol and fats in the blood that increase heart attacks. The effect, equivalent to about a third that of taking daily drugs, was really substantial, substantial, they said. But experts said meat and dairy had their own health benefits, and not all meat-free diets were actually healthy. The research pulled together the 30 trials since 1982 in which scientists gave volunteers a set diet and tracked its impact on heart health. In total, nearly 2,400 people from around the world were involved. Cathay Pacific Airways has fired three flight attendants after a complaint that they had discriminated against non-English-speaking passengers. They were sacked after an audio clip of the cabin crew apparently mocking passengers went viral. The Hong Kong carrier launched an internal investigation and apologized for causing widespread concern, widespread concern. Chinese state media claimed the airline was looking down on mainland Chinese people. A passenger traveling from Chengdu to Hong Kong said the cabin crew mocked passengers who mistakenly asked for a carpet instead of a blanket. In the audio clip, a flight attendant can be heard laughing. She tells her colleagues, if you cannot say blanket in English, you cannot have it. Carpet is on the floor. India's new parliament is set to be inaugurated this weekend amid a political row as 19 opposition parties say they will boycott the ceremony. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will inaugurate the building on Sunday. But opposition leaders say India's president, the highest constitutional authority, should open the building. Leaders of the governing Bharatiya Janata Party, BJP, have accused the opposition of playing political games. On Wednesday, 19 parties, including the main opposition Congress, issued a statement announcing their collective decision to boycott the inauguration ceremony. They said that while the opening was a momentous, momentous occasion, Mr. Modi's decision to inaugurate the building by himself was a grave insult and a direct assault on India's democracy. On the 26th of June 1975, the police arrived at a hostel in India's southern city of Bangalore and arrested Atal Bihari Vajpayee, a prominent opposition politician. The previous evening, Prime Minister Indira Gandhi had imposed a state of emergency and plunged the nation into an extraordinary crisis. Elections had been suspended, civil rights curbed, 
the media gagged and critics and opposition politicians rounded up. Gandhi also banned the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh, RSS, the ideological fountainhead of the later-day Hindu nationalist Bharatiya Janata Party, BJP, which rules in today. Vajpayee was then a leader of the Jan Sangh, the right-wing forerunner to the BJP, and a member of the RSS. More than two decades later, he had risen to become India's prime minister, twice briefly in 1996 and 1998, and then a full term, leading a coalition federal government between 1999 and 2004. The much-anticipated face-off is finally here. Ron DeSantis is launching his bid for the 2024 Republican presidential nomination and is widely predicted to become Donald Trump's main rival. Mr. DeSantis is styling himself as a Trump-style conservative without the Trump baggage. But the Florida governor enters a race in which the former president remains the clear frontrunner and still the dominant force in the Republican Party. The DeSantis pitch is that he has a record of achievement on conservative priorities and values that he can point to, a contrast to the four years of the Trump presidency that had few legislative victories. During his time in office, he's enacted high-profile high conservative laws to make it easier to own a gun, to restrict sex and gender identity education in schools, and to tighten voting rules and limit abortions. Critics have hailed Wes Anderson's star-studded new film Asteroid City as stylish, but lacking in substance. The sci-fi homage sees a junior stargazer convention disrupted by world-changing events. A busload of its stars, including Tom Hanks and Scarlett Johansson, were in orbit around the film's premiere at the Cannes Film Festival on Tuesday. Oscar winner actor Hanks walked the red carpet with his wife, actress and producer Rita Wilson. Asteroid City sees Johansson lead an ensemble cast of Hollywood royalty, including Hanks and Margot Robbie, both newcomers to Anderson's celluloid world, Jason Schwartzman and Tilda Swinton. The film also features Jeffrey Wright, Edward Norton, Adrian Brody and Steve Carell, who stepped in for Anderson favorite Bill Murray after he caught COVID days before they started filming. 